Hi everyone and welcome to the channel for the latest update on Hardendale, my Engage industrial micro layout based on the limestone quarry of the same name in Cumbria. I think um, where I left the, the last uh, Hardendale update um, was I had the trap down, had the background scenics in place and trains running around. Um, since then I've added some buildings to represent um, those that you might find at Hardendale quarry that are used to load the trains and to also provide um, a nice scenic break into the fiddle yard. Um, in a change from Crow Road, um, I've gone back to plastic um, for these buildings, um, as I've got plenty of um, corrugated textured card um, from previous builds. Um, and these are just cut to shape and then painted with um, enamel paint um, in a similar shade to um, some of the photos of the, the real quarry buildings. Uh, for control of this layout, um, I've added a, a little control panel um, to the side of the, uh, integrated into the, the side of the box file um, to control the polarity of the um, unifrog points and the um, and a little isolated section that I've got, um, which works quite nicely. Um, you don't really sometimes you don't need these polarity switches for the unifrog points, um, but when you've got sort of um, short wheel-based um, engines like the the Hunslet Hun the uh, Hunslet Shunter, um, these can stop um on the on the tiny little bit of um of dead track um so i think f for this that's why i decided to um to add the polarity switching just to to make sure that um they don't stop um looking at some photos um it's obvious that there's quite a lot of um limestone powder all around the the area um and so to try and replicate that um as a weather the track um with some white powder um, I did a bit to the grass um, surround as well, um, which yeah seems to be the case in the, in the prototype. Um, in addition to the vaccine, I've um, also did a, a Photoshop of the, um, the limestone kilns, um, which are quite an iconic site uh, in the area um, as, a, as a nice background um, to that as well. Um, and finally, I've um, added this small digger um, that uh, I can't remember where I got it from. I'll, I'll put, post a link in the in the description. Um, that I've weathered using the same white powder, so it all sort of blends in um, and adds a bit of more interest to that sort of little bit of dead ground in in the um, in the foreground. Over whilst um, I in these latest additions to the layout, um, I did find some annoying running faults um, that have appeared since the, the last time I had it out. Um, it was okay last time. Um, but they seem to have uh, yeah, got worse uh, in the interim. Um, the first isn't that big a deal. Um, as you can see in this photo, the, the track has warped slightly, um, probably due to moisture getting into the box frame, um, which is a lesson there. I probably should have um, sealed it better um, before applying the, um, the cork and, and all the ballast because there's quite a lot of moisture goes down goes down there, and I think that's, that's the cause of it. Um, the second one's a bit more serious, um, and that's a warping of the track joined between the um, the Cato track into the fiddle yard and the Pico track in the main layout. Um, and that causes locos to stall and wagons to derail. Um, I think it's caused by the, the same issues, kind of moisture into the, the box file um, hasn't been sealed properly. Um, and I think it could be related to the fact that um, also the, the ballast took a very long time to dry because um, I did it in winter in the garage and it, yeah, it took a couple took nearly a week to, to dry out and in that time I guess the moisture's had a chance to soak into the box file and warp it. Um, this is the second box file I've made. Um, you might have seen my cork call um, layout um, and I didn't have that problem there so I think it is related to um, to, the, to the drying time. Um, and so what I've decided to do is kind of start from scratch kind of. Um, so I've ripped up the track um, which is quite easy to do just kind of wet it lifted it so I managed to rescue all the track that I, um, from the from the box file um, and I, I'm using um, the skill scenes um, BB018 um, box file in a oh, sorry, layout in a box um, as the baseboard um, which is similar to the ones that I've used on Crow Road it's just a little bit smaller um, and for the first time for me I'm going to instead of using the Kato track to connect to the fiddle yard, um, I'm going to go for the more conventional method of just kind of aligning the baseboards um, using um, using bolts, um, and then having the track perfectly lined up. So we'll we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, first time trying it properly. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed. 
So on the um, the stock front, I've started work on a, a few new additions to the layout. Um, firstly, I've started work on these um, bulk containers that um, seem to be used to transport um, the limestone from Hardendale at the moment. Um, I got the plastic kits from Sea Rail. Um, I'll put a link in the description who do these um, bulk container kits. Um, I have used them before, but pre-made um, that I've used to represent the trains that used to run from um, working the docks to uh, somewhere on the east coast. Um, but with these kits, they, they've sort of come unpainted, so it's just a, a simple case of um, putting them together and, and painting it blue. Um, the bulk containers that run to Hardendale don't seem to have the same roof um, as the kit. Um, it looks like some sort of um, canvas covering, um, so I'm going to try and um, replicate that using some cling film, um, stretch flat, um, and then spraying it with a, a bit of grey paint um, and then cutting it to fit, which I've, I've used in the past to create sort of um, um, tarpaulin coverings for um, from wagons, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, and also on the stock front, um, I started work on this Sentinel diesel shunter. Um, this is a 3D print from Mordrin's models on Shapeways that's designed to fit um, a Cato 109 chassis, which I've used before on quite a few of my builds. Um, and so far, I've painted it yellow um, using various coats of um, acrylic paint. Um, added some warning stripes below the buffers using um, a rule and a, a thick felt pen. Um, and then darkened it all um, with a, a little bit of black wash. Um, I plan to convert this from DC, which it currently is, to DCC, which will be my first attempt at doing that. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, I think there is um, a guide on the internet somewhere as to how you, how you do this. Um, and I've also added some, um, some windows um, uh, using some sort of, um, some sort of glue that um, yeah, seems, to, seems to work quite well. Um, and I think it's come, yeah, it's come, along, um, come along quite nicely, I think. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much where I'm up to with um, with Hardendale. So kind of a, a little bit um, two steps forward, three steps back. Um, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm happier now. I think it got a nice solid base, um, and uh, yeah, hopefully I can get the, the fiddle work, fiddle yard alignment worked, worked to work. Um, yeah, it should be a, a much um, a slightly bigger layout as well. So a little bit more to more room to, to display stuff and run things. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed. Um, if you Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please leave a like um, and maybe leave a comment in the comment section below. And um, yeah, see you all next time.